this conference will now be recorded. Currently at 6.375. Um, so keep that in mind as we move on to the next couple couple of slides in the presentation. Just just out of curiosity, is that down from the last time you did the analysis? The return, the, the the analysis, yeah, it's it's fairly stable from last year to this year, um, but it's been it's it's a moving target and it has been trending down a little bit each year. Okay, generally speaking. All right, on this slide we have a, and I, I'm going to preface that all the results for 2021 on the next couple slides reflect uh, a six a change to a 6.25% interest rate assumption, because um, that is my recommendation and I uh, uh, for this year. Um, so just just a preface to that, and then after I get to these next couple slides, I'll have the details of how we get there. <clears throat> so this slide shows. Uh, a history of the funded status of all four plans. Um, and you can see all three, uh, three of the plans are up at 100% funded um, this year uh, with the police OPEB uh, just at about 80% funded with, but a s significant improvement over last year. Um, and there's some, se there's several reasons for, for, for those changes. Um, and I'll get into those as we walk through the details on, on a, on each plan uh, in a few slides from now. On the next page, we have a 10-year history of the contributions uh, for each of the four plans. Um, and you can see for for just about every plan, there was a reduction in the actuarially determined contribution uh, for, for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, and this is, again, despite lowering the interest rate assumption to 6.25%. And the main reason for that is that uh, the asset return was so phenomenal this past year that it helped to improve the funded status of the plan significantly um, and reduce the pressure uh, uh, the, uh, on, the, on the contributions, um, which is why if you go to the next slide, I, I'm making a recommendation, not, not the only reason, but part of the reason why I'm making the recommendation to, to lower the interest rate assumption to 6.25% this year and keep working towards that ultimate goal of 5.9 to 6% uh, target um, take it, to take advantage of the gains of the plans uh, to, to, uh, to re continue to reduce that assumption. So you're using the most realistic, realistic assumption possible um, uh, while continuing to keep the budget reasonable. Um, so this first, uh, the next four pages are going to just go through each plan in a little bit of detail. Um, first being the town pension plan. Uh, all four of the next pages have uh, several iterations. We have the, ninth, I'm showing first the full valuation from 2019 results and the 2020 interim valuation results just for comparative uh, analysis uh, just to see where the numbers were in the last couple of years as as to where they are now. Um, and then the full valuation baseline, this assumes no changes to any assumptions. It's just reflecting the updated census information and the updated assets. I mean, as you can see, the uh, the funded ratio uh, went from 97.8% last year to almost 103% this year. So uh, about four, four, percent, four, four, four percentage points increase. Um, so they are now in a a surplus situation, um, and the the funding policy for the plan is that when your funded ratio reaches 100%, we change the amortization period from a closed period to a 10-year open period. So you'll see about midway through the uh, through the page where it says amortization period. Last year we were at 17, and this year we're saying we're at 10, and that's why um, we're going to amortize the surplus, the the the, the extra. Uh, assets over a 10 year period to help to offset some of the normal cost. Okay. Um, and that's a funding policy that was established a few years back. So as a result, if you go down to the bottom line, the actual determined contribution um, decreased from 2.5 million last year to just over 2.1 million uh, this year. Uh, this, so there, and there was two main reasons for, for the decrease on the contribution, one being the asset returns the favorable asset returns. Um, the second being there were some significant liability gains as a result of uh, the death audit exercise that we went through this past year. Um, and we, we, we were able to discover 
uh, a handful of retirees who had passed away but had not been reported, uh, and we were able to remove them the liability from from the plan um, and produce some gains there. Jen, quick quick question uh, related to those things. Uh, you know, first on the amortization, if if the plan was to go back into a positive um, unfunded liability, would you restart it at 20 years, or would we continue with a 16 year? I guess the answer to that question would depend on when it went back to a, a positive. If it was next year, we'd probably just continue down with the 16 year. Um, but if it was like several years from now, then we'd probably reevaluate the situation there, what made sense to reset it or to continue down. Because if it was two years from now, we'd down, now be down to what? We're six, should have been 16 this year, two years from now we'd be at 14. Mm -hmm. So you're getting, as you get closer to 10, we never want to go below 10 um, because it gets too volatile. Uh, so it, we'd have to reevaluate. Okay. The, the second is, is there any way to get the details of the gain loss? Because I think that's very valuable and helpful for us following what's really going on. I know uh, that sure. the asset gains overwhelmed everything else, but it would be helpful to understand where our other assumptions are on target or not. Uh, yeah, we should certainly give you the details of the gain loss. That's part of the, our process as we go through some painstakingly detailed analysis, um, looking at each individual person, what we expected to happen to that person and what actually happened to that person grouped and we can group, we group them by different decrements. So for example, if we expected 12, these are just hypothetical numbers. We might've expected 12 people to retire, but only eight retired this year. And that resulted in a, a gain because of whatever reason. Um, so we could certainly put that together. Um, but that, that may that may require uh, to to compile that information in a in a manner that is understandable that may is a little bit it's above it beyond our sc normal normal scope of work and may require a slightly additional fee. Well, I mean, I, I've always assumed that an actuarial report should show the development of the specific items of gain loss as an assessment of the assumptions. But I noticed they haven't been included in prior minimum reports. I would have thought that would be part of the standard. I don't, you know, we don't need overly specific, but we should understand what deltas we have relative to our assumptions. Assets sure. I, yeah, and I and I could I could put that together. Okay. I mean, if you just include it in the report, that'd be that'd be sufficient. Okay, I can make a note for that in the future. Okay, thank you. And Jen, just to clarify too on the, um, you know, so the gains you mentioned that removing some of the liabilities. Um, helped and then when you the investments were the majority of the part but because of our smoothing for these particular numbers you're just taking into account like one fifth because we smooth it over a five-year period right so that's correct that is correct yeah. so, so another way to look at that so next year assuming there's no other gains or losses both on the liability or investment side it'll help to put downward bring the, the contribution yeah. down even more because we're going to bring in more of that gain and recognize it more of it Right. Or if there is an, a, a loss, this will help to offset that loss. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if you look at the market value of assets versus our actuarial liability, even at six and a quarter, we've got almost 104 million versus 92 and a half million. So there's a substantial you know, cushion in there of assets. <laughs> and that's and that's that's why we smooth. You know, it, it, it's definitely beneficial in the in the down down years, but you know. In, in the up years, you're like, I wish we could recognize it all, but it is good to kind of keep it tucked away for future years because it does help keep things from getting too volatile. Right. On the I country. mean, you know, eventually you're going to reflect that it's just a smoothing process. Exactly. So then uh, back to the town pension plan, if you lower the interest rate assumption to 6.25%, um, it does increase the liabilities slightly. Uh, you're still uh, over 100% funded. Um, and the ultimate resulting actual determined contribution is about 2.4 million, um, which is slightly le less than, than the prior year. Yeah, just one more question related to sure. the six and a quarter, because I know we've done you know a number of surveys of other towns um, in our area, and, and we have tended to be on the, the lowest end, maybe Westport, I think, is lower than us, but I think we were lower than every other town, mm -hmm. or town we looked at. Where would we stand at six and a quarter versus, say, your your municipalities that uh, Milliman? Uh, what's their average? Um, I'd be, say you're lower than most. Um, you know, we've be been working with quartile. Uh, bottom quartile. Yeah, I'd say you're in the bottom quartile. Yeah. Okay. 
So we're pretty conservative versus the rest of Connecticut and probably much better funded. Yes, yeah, and I can tell you the, the most of the ones that are at the six and a quarter or six and a half are not at 100% funded. So um, you're in a, a, a great position right now. All right, uh, next page. We'll look at the police pension plan. Um, and it's a, you know, more of the same story um, with the exception of you were already at 100% funded pre previously, so you're already at the 10 year amortization period. So we're gonna continue to stay at that 10 year amortization period. Um, on the police side, there were um, not, the, the, the liability gain and loss was really, um, there was not much going on there. Uh, we did uncover one, uh, I guess, one retiree who was not being valued properly because the form of benefit that was communicated to us when we became the actuary was not correct. Um, we were valuing a life annuity for a person who since passed away and is still, their spouse is collecting a benefit because they were really a joint survivor annuity. Um, so there was a loss there as a result of that. Um, but that was really just a, a correction of um, incorrect data that we had received. Um, but again, the, the asset gains uh, more than offset that. And on the police side, the, the contribution you can see went down, assuming no changes in the interest rate assumption from 845,000 down to 776,000. And then again, lowering the interest rate assumption down to six and a quarter brings that up a bit. Still just slightly over 100% funded, so that's good. Um, and uh, at a contribution of just over $900,000 for the year. Uh, moving on to the the OPEP, the town OPEP plan. Uh, there were some significant gains to the to the town OPEP plan, uh, primarily due to uh, a few non Medicare eligible retirees uh, no longer receiving coverage, um, and that they that could be because they passed away or they. These are usually the, the teachers um, who don't have, aren't eligible for Medicare, either because they passed away or they, uh, or they um, got benefits through their spouse or joined the state plan. You know, usually one of those, those are one of the key things that happens, um, but they're no longer, at the end of the day, they're no longer on the town's uh, insurance. Um, and they, those are the most expensive um, liabilities is the non-Medicare eligible teachers. So three dropped off, producing significant gains to the plan. Um, in addition, uh, we updated uh, the trend, the medical inflation assumption to reflect the repeal of the, the Cadillac tax under the Affordable Care Act. Um, so that produced a significant gain to the plan as well. Um, and then all, almost all of that was offset by uh, the premiums being um, higher than we expected going the insurance premiums going up by more than we expected. So the the net impact was pretty much neutral as far as the liability was concerned. Um, but again, the assets performed well. And as a result, uh, the contribution, if you look at the second to last column, the contribution um, went from 319,000 down to 262,000 uh, for the year. And again, lowering the interest rate assumption down to 6.25 increases that slightly. Um, to, to just south of 275,000. And then on to the police OPEB plan. Um, pretty much all liability games as a result, the, 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 the experience was what we expected, but then the premiums were on the police side were, were much lower than we had expected them to, to be. Um, and again, we, updated the medical inflation assumption to reflect the removal of the Cadillac tax under the ACA, uh, all leading to lower liabilities. Uh, and as you can see, the, 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 the contribution went from 500, almost 590,000 last year down to 390,000 this year. So significant reduction. Um, and again, lowering the interest rate slightly increases that to just about 400,000 for the year. So net of uh, complying all four plans together, contributions have gone down um, this year, 
but funded ratios have all significantly have have, have improved, uh, and in some cases, uh, have significantly improved. So in short, you're you're in really great shape, um, and my recommendation is to lower the interest rate assumption down to 6.25% this year, um, to keep uh, slowly, uh, methodically chipping away at that assumption to get to the ultimate target. And the ultimate target being that 5.89 that you based your capital assumptions yeah, on, right? Yeah, we, and we could even go as high as maybe six if you have some active management in your portfolio. And that, again, that's a moving target. So that I could come back next year and that 5.89 could be something completely, something different. But as of right now, that's the target. Um, I, Given that we do full valuations every two years, I may even recommend making a, an, an interest rate assumption in the interim year rather than waiting two full years to adjust it downward again. Um, in the past, we've waited the full two years, but it might make sense because we to, to maybe either go to 6.125 next year or 6% um, next year. Does anyone have any questions for Jen? Just a minor comment, Jen. Uh, looking back at the chart of the contributions, and for some reason, it looks like the police OPEB, you've got 800,000 of contribution for 2022. Um, okay, yeah. Should that be six? That should be six, yep. That's, I apologize for that. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have any comments to share on the recommendation uh, moving our, so we have two things um, that we want to talk about, the contribution of, um, for, for the town for this year, the recommendation, and then specifically the recommendation that um, Milliman is making on our return assumption and reducing it uh, to the 6.25. I think, I mean, I'll just start by saying it's in line with what we have done historically in terms of starting to try to lower the return. I think we are in a good position because as Jen said, we are relative to our peers and universe. We're sort of ahead of the game. Mm -hmm. um, we don't know what the futures, future years will bring and in a period where we have the markets supporting um, us, you know, to not impact the town's contribution and the police's contribution significantly uh, seems reasonable to me. Um, I would like to hear if anybody has a different opinion or if they agree with that um, approach and thought process. Uh, this is Bruce. I just, myself, I'm a little uncomfortable with their assumption on the fixed return possibility. So I'm all in favor of bringing it down. I just, I can't see how we're going to get 4% out of bonds from here, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where you are on that, Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I under, understand your view and don't disagree, uh, Bruce. Um, so I, I think that, that said, step. I do know that our our equities are always overweighted relative to our benchmark, and so we do have equities. Um, now, granted, it's more volatile, but you know you do have that that equity premium that we are leaning the portfolio towards. Plus, these are thirty-year projected assumptions, not not three or four or five, and. Uh, we're likely to see increases in interest rates and maybe even inflation, which will impact things. Uh, I guess the other part of it is, you know, six and a half percent equity returns long term. I think our fund has averaged well more than six and a half, even with these low fixed income returns. So looking at that, that might be, you know, a little on the conservative side, even if you feel fixed income isn't. Uh, again, we are way ahead of the rest of 
municipalities in terms of return. I'd love to know where six and a quarter puts you in the towns in Milliman's universe. Uh, and we've got a massive amount of uh, fixed, you know, assets we haven't reflected. But if the town right. is comfortable in being very conservative, there's, there's no downside in it other than we're sticking more money in a pension plan that uh, hopefully we can utilize. And it's a, you know, there's, yeah. it's a long-term plan, so these liabilities are going to continue to grow. Um, so it may just turn out at some point, if we, if we have a reverse, we just will fund a lot less. I mean, I'm, what are I'm, Right at that point in time, we won't, the town won't be in a position to have to step in in a period where maybe right. the town itself is not as um, well positioned to do so. The other thing, um, Tony, to your point about being ahead of the game, that being ahead of the game may allow us to continue to take an every other year sort of view and not have to do another step down next year per se. I would, yeah, I would suggest we wait until we have full valuations, uh, especially yeah. let's take a look at what the gain and loss is showing, because if we're getting positive gain and loss gains in other areas in the liability set, that again is also a cushion against the asset. It's not performing up to our expectations. So I would, mm -hmm. I would suggest that we ought to at least wait and do it at full valuations. Yeah. What about the, the wage assumptions? That you know, that could be critical in this whole thing, too, which, uh, you know, there's a lot of upward pressure there um, that I'm not sure what what's reflected in these numbers we're looking at now. Um, what are the wage options? I don't know? have it off the top of my head, but let me just give me a minute. I can pull that up. So on the town side, it's a pr fairly simplistic assumption. It's a three and a half percent per year salary increase. Um, so it's, it does not take into account age or years of service. Mm -hmm. um, on the police side. It is graded by service. Um, I think it probably ranges from about 6% to graded down to maybe three and a half, three percent 3%. So it depends on the years of service, which makes sense for a police population. Well, maybe we could ask somebody from the town to comment on what, what our recent, more recent experience is. I mean, are we able to get away with three and a half percent Salary increases in today's environment. Is anybody from the town on the call that can answer that? Lori, are you there? I see her. I can't hear her. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if she jumps in and, and says something else, I will defer to her, but our recent contract settlements have been less than that. Um, they've been in the two and a quarter, two and a half range. Um, once we add in step increases, some people do get more than that. So the average will be a little bit more going forward. I don't know, you know, I don't really have a feel for where it would be. That's where I would, uh, ha have Lori's input. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, because with this tight la- labor market, you're hearing about increases rolling through at five, six, whatever, you know. Right. So. Okay. Hi, this is Lori. Can you hear me? Yep, yep. no, I can't. Yes. Okay, great. Sorry about that. I was having some difficulty. Um, so we are not seeing those large increases that that I think Tony had mentioned. We're seeing, uh, we've been seeing two and a quarter, two and a half. And even in the most recent contract we negotiated, which is currently with the uh, town hall union and it's currently going through the approval process, um, the largest increases uh, are two and a half. That does not include the step increase. Um, So it would be slightly higher than that. Um, But, you know, that's based on um, Connecticut negotiated awards. Um, We're in line with what other municipalities are doing right now. So municipalities have not yet seen um, a significant rise in wages. Not yet. And there hasn't been any acceleration of resignations that's been so popular in the press. That, that is accurate. We have not seen um, many resignations at all. We've, you know, there's a little uptick in retirements, but we have not had resignations where people are leaving our jobs for other jobs, possibly higher paying oh. jobs. Not the case. Well, that's good. Yep. Yeah. And, and I would just comment, it's really only in the part time positions with the hourly wages where we've seen an, um, a need to raise those. And part of that's driven by the increasing minimum wage. For the state. Any other, Bruce, does that address any other questions on the wages? No, that's that's fine. That's encouraging to me. (laughs) Surprisingly encouraging. I think the police are going to have an acceleration of retirements, but that's a factors in a whole different kettle of fish. But it's been an interesting year for us and be interesting to see going forward. But Mm -hmm. time will tell. Yeah, I I would just second that. Um, I think that is the case. And and it's not really driven by wages, though. Um, You know, it has more to do with the environment for policing, uh, the laws that Connecticut has put in place, um, you know, and some other factors. So it's I do not believe that has anything to do with our wage level, which is quite good when compared to other municipalities for police. Mm -hmm. But we will be hiring a, a, a whole bunch of new officers, so it'll be interesting going forward. Trying to hire a bunch of new officers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we've just hired two, and there will be more. But are those at higher levels than you would have anticipated, or are we able to get the hires at the levels that you were anticipating? You know, I think we're having difficult recruiting new officers, and and that's kind of common uh, throughout the state and and actually the nation. So one of the hires is a new recruit coming in um, at the entry level, and one was a transfer from another town who's already gone through the academy. Uh, And when when they transfer in, they come um, in at a level higher than the entry. So nothing out of the ordinary at this point. Okay, good. Um, I know that relatives last year, the police are in a slightly different position where in the aggregate, the recommended contributions by stepping down to 6.25 are still lower. But in the case of the police, it's a slight small increase. Any comments from the police side in terms of comfort with moving to a 6.25? 
um, and the impact that has on the recommended contributions for this year? No, I think 6.25 makes sense for everyone all the way around. And we've certainly got some um, wind at our back with the returns that we had this year. So um, I have no problem with that. Does everyone feel that we're in a position to vote on the reduc reduction for that um, assumed assumption rate, the return assumption? Or are there more questions that you'd like to discuss before we move to a vote? Okay, I'll take that as a comfort to move forward. Um, so I would, for the town, is there a motion to uh, reduce the return assumption down to 6.25 per the recommendation of Milliman? I'm Bruce, Bruce will move it. No second. Paul moved it. Paul, are you moving it for both the police and the town? <laughs> oh, you're on mute, Paul. <laughs> That's what I think, yes. Thank you. So we have a motion for both the town and for the police. Do I have a second for the town? A second. Second. Tony, against the town. Everybody in favor for the town? Caroline, yes. Yeah. Bruce, great. Yes. And for the police, do we have a second? Second. Okay, Kim seconds the police. Do we have a vote for the police, please? All in favor? Yes. Okay, that's unanimous there. Great. So that approves the reduction in the assumption going forward to 6.25. Um, thank you, Jen, for uh, for that recommendation. Um, does anybody have any other questions for Jen? I'm, we can. I don't think Jen needs to be present for our approving for the town. Um, for the recommended uh, payments to um, at this point. Any other final questions for Jen? I think Jen, it's just Tony's request to look into what um, additional uh, detail you can provide into sure. the, yeah, great, as a follow-up. Terrific, I can do that. All right. Great, Jen, thank, thank you. you. Take care, everybody, stay safe. <clears throat> Okay, um, next on our agenda, um, we have a, um, well, actually, just to go back, um, would everybody like to um, vote currently on the um, the contributions to the town, or is that something that uh, needs to be discussed with other groups before we um, want to make a motion? I know we've been, the town, I will say, has been very good at, um, funding the plans and, and providing the contribution that's recommended based on the um, actuarial report. And I would suggest that, um, you know, that's part of what has contributed to the health and the great funded status. So I would be supportive of continuing to recommend that the town do so, um, but open to any other comments that anybody has at this time on that topic. Okay. Shall we go ahead and vote to confirm that we would like to make that recommendation to the town? Sure. Okay, Bruce, I'll take that as a uh, motion from you for the town to uh, recommend the uh, contributions that Milliman has um, proposed using the 6.25 return assumption. Uh, do we have a second for the town? I'll second. Tony, second. All in favor for the town? Great. Paul, great. Thank you. That's unanimous. And for the police, uh, the uh, proposal. Great. Kim, motions. Do we have a second for the police? Brent, second. All in favor for the police? Yes. Unanimous. Okay. Terrific. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the um, the expenditure. Are there any? We don't need to vote. It's just um, informational sharing. Any comments or questions regarding the fees and expenditures for this quarterly report? Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda are the um, the uh, refunds and payments for the um, town. Uh, police, it looks like you don't have any this quarter, so there will be nothing to review. 
Tony, I know you're always uh, great about reviewing these in advance. Did you have any comments um, to share? I can make these? calculations on all of them, so they're, they're fine. Okay. Uh, can we make a motion to approve these, please? I move to approve. Have... Tony moves to approve. Paul seconds. All in favor for the town to approve? Aye. Yes, I. Terrific. Thank you. Um, and that moves us into the minutes um, from uh, our last meeting in October. Or no, actually, before that, we have an update, I think, on one of the things that we discussed um, is the audit. Right. Um, we've had the, we sent revised information to Milliman. Um, we had six participants in the town plan that were impacted by changes and two in the police plan. Um, Tony's reviewed the recalculations and given his okay on those, so we're hoping to get the changes in for February. HR will be working on a communication to the affected individuals and then getting their payments updated. Um, where we ended up was um, mostly minimal changes. We had a couple that were significant. Um, overall impact to the town plan is a decrease of $2.24 per month. Um, the total retro amount paid that's going to be uh, recouped by the plan is $52.72. But the most significant one that we did find is a decrease of just under $62 per month for one employee. Um, one employee also has an increase of $48 a month. Other than that, there were a couple that were about $1 or $2, um, $5, $15 per month. On the police side, there were two participants impacted. Um, they both had pretty, one had a very sizable increase of $127 per month. The other one's only about $12. Um, the total monthly impact on the pension fund is $139.43. And the total retro adjustment that'll be paid out of the fund is $1,509. Jen, you said that was communicated already to to the, the the two retirees and the police, or will be communicated? It will be. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you, Jennifer. Anyone have any other further questions? Um, that leads us to the minutes from our last meeting, and any comments? or corrections or comments to the minutes from uh, October? Okay, and just looking um, here absent, uh, Kim and Tony, uh, given that you are absent, I assume that you will abstain from the uh, approval, but do I have a motion from those who were present in October to approve the minutes for um, our last meeting for the town? Bruce moves for the town. Do I have a second for the town? Paul, all in favor for the town to approve? Great. And Tony abstains. And for the police, do I have a motion to approve? Motion. Brent, motions to approve. Do we have a second? Paul, and in favor for the police? Yes. Thank you. That was mine. Okay. Um, I believe that concludes the formal agenda. Is there any other business that anybody on the board would like to raise before we adjourn? Okay, then with that, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved for the police. Okay, great. Kim and, and Paul for the town. I'm in favor to adjourn. <laughs> Good to see everybody. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hopefully, we will all 